Hello everybody, how you doing? Of course, as if you hadn't guessed, Andy Mancam here. What better reason to make a video than I am off out on the bike? I'm heading on down to the Visa Bergland once again, but this time completely on my own. After the trip to Switzerland with Smoky Bar, which to be honest I haven't spoken about very much, but suffice it to say the trip was absolutely incredible and the videos will be coming as soon as possible. Hopefully you've seen the drone trailer, which is a wonderful little showcase of just how good that little DJI spark is. But yeah, after the trip to Switzerland with Smoky Bar, once we parted ways, I still had two days of riding completely on my own through all of Germany, and I really enjoyed it. That's not to say I didn't enjoy our time together, Smokey, don't worry. But it was really cool just to be able to spend a couple of days on my own, stop when I want, go where I want, just have my own headspace. I'm also really glad to be able to get a chance to get out on the bike for a full day of nothing but riding around for fun, because it's been a bit of a roller coaster couple of weeks, it really has. And obviously there was the incredible high of being in the Alps for a week. Managed to do eight Alpine passes in just four days in Switzerland. It was amazing. So yeah, that was a high. And then on the way back, while I was on my own riding through Germany, I was using the drone in one of its automatic modes, just trying to get it to follow me a little bit. And then the battery died and it decided it wanted to land through a tree and... Uh, a long story short it didn't go well and the drone ended up with three arms instead of four and what you may not know is that's not necessarily the end of the world because the spark drones are quite cheap to fix i managed to get a whole new chassis for the thing for 25 euros the only downside was that it meant a hundred percent organ transplant as all of the insides had to be taken for the old broken chassis and put into the new whole chassis so yeah i fixed the drone sadly it didn't go quite according to plan and i actually made it worse because as i was doing it i managed to break one of the motor controllers there was a period where i thought i'd broken three of the motor controllers and only one was actually working but luckily it was the other way around yeah so that was a real trough but then once again ordered a new motor controller cost only 15 euros washed it onto the newly transplanted body and then just as a little test just to be sure this is the scientist in me talking I thought I'd stick one of the old motor controllers on just to be absolutely 100% that they were knackered. And sure enough, they all worked except for the one that I thought was working. Although the clue came that that wasn't working when it cracked, there was a big spark and the LED almost caught fire. <laughs> oh, it was a real successful repair job. But anyway, after all of that, the drone is now flying again. So we're back up on a high and today, hoping to get some nice drone footage in the Visa Bergland if we can find some nice foresty, woody areas for some scenic cinematic nonsense so i'm gonna get first this massive tunnel out of the way then after that two hours of motorway after which i'll see you in the hills Ta-ra! well then here we are on the outskirts of hanover just before the place where the terrain starts to get a bit interesting so let's go and see if we can't find some twisty shall we First motorbike, Forbidden Road. Thankfully it's on Sundays and holidays, so today we're all good. I was actually reading last night on the internet about a bit of a movement in Germany of motorbike clubs actually engaging lawyers to try and fight and then ultimately overturn these anti-motorbike road measures. With some success as well it would seem, but overall these kind of road closures definitely seem to be on the up in Germany. I'm seeing more and more of them on every single trip I go on. Really sad. Why should bikers in particular not be able to come down here. I read another article that was saying about how around Kutterberg, which is in the area that Teapot won, the likeable rider and Bulldog Gaz went to on the, the meetup that I managed to miss, where the police were doing speed checks and they were very surprised to find out that far more car drivers were smashing the speed limits than motorbike riders. And that the motorbike riders were actually very respectful road users riding safely and responsibly. So yeah, make of that what you will.
snap, crackle and pop. twisties into the village eh and that is just the beginning hopefully it's going to get a lot more twisty so i was actually having a little bit of an issue back there with the drone i wonder if anybody can help me out with a potential solution i was trying to make it so that the drone would just hover in the air pointing in a single direction and record me as i rode up the hill whether or not that was successful i found it very difficult to find out i don't think it was he said what was happening is as i was riding away the drone first time i think it lost connection and then returned to home so the second time I bunged the remote controller into a bush next to where I took off from, which didn't fill me with joy, has to be said. Leaving my 150 euro controller, which is connected to a 400 euro flying camera, for anybody to come along, pick one up, haul in the other, and then nick off with both of them. So uh, yeah, and in any case, as I was coming back up the hill, had returned to home and recording had stopped. So how can you do that? How can you send your drone up, have it hover in position while you sod off somewhere else and then come back without the drone freaking out and going home? But due to my increased blood pressure levels after trying to make that happen several times, uh, that'll be me knocking that on the head for recording myself for today. We'll just try and get some scenic stuff instead. <laughs> U-turn was caused by the fact that I'm also receiving directions for the route that I planned last night via radio instructions because the sat-nav battery is dead, the power connector thingy has stopped working, uh, yeah, and for some reason the Garmin doesn't seem to hold a charge very well. So that's in the tail pack charging up as we speak. But at least there is a solution in that I can beam the directions into the Interphone Tor stuck onto the side of my bonds, and the adventure continues. I have just remembered why I don't ever have my GPS connected to my headset because of the stupid speed camera bong 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 every five bloody seconds. Which obviously means if I want to turn that off, I have to pull over, open my bag, pull out the sat nav, go into the settings, all of this nonsense all over again for the 15th time today. I just want to ride my bike. I just came out to ride the bike on some nice roads. I mean, already on the way here, Oh, because of the roadworks on German motorways. It took three and a half hours to do a two hour journey to get down here. I spent most of the time parked on the friggin' motorway with no less than four separate roadworks. Well, this is looking a bit more like it. My experience is often the one problem with riding in Germany. The roads are amazing, yet you do seem to spend a lot of time riding through little villages and towns. I mean, don't get me wrong, these villages and towns are really pretty, they're quaint, they're quiet, but they're not exactly enjoyable for the 50th time. It is annoying when you get a couple of twisties and then a village, and a couple of twisties and then a village, and you just end up spending more time doing 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour than you do pushing it in the bendy bits. And we all know I would rather be pushing it in the bendy bits. Completely obvious, which everybody knows is exactly what she said.
kids, I'm afraid, with that pretty cool looking band of very sad faced sunflowers behind us. That's kind of as far as we're going to go. We have to start the journey home now because, as you can see, the light is slowly dwindling. I've miraculously changed into a see-through visor here but as it is with all of the delays and the faffing about I'm going to be getting home about three hours later than I had originally planned but yeah lessons learned if you want to come out on your own and do something like this and take bike footage and take drone footage you just need to be prepared for it to take forever the amount of faff is incredible so uh, yeah hopefully you've got a few things to, to make something out of but at the very very least I am overjoyed and filled with satisfaction that I've managed to bring the drone back to life. That poor little sod, after being smashed unceremoniously through a tree, and then ham-fistedly thumped back together by this thug, it's just really good to know that the thing works again. We can rebuild you, make you stronger. Yeah, so now we've got the last little few stretches of twisty road, hilliness and forestation before we jump onto the motorway for two hours of what will probably now be complete darkness bathed riding. So let's get on, enjoy this last section before we have a final toodle pip on the motorway, eh? One last cross back over the river visa. And then here we go, turning off to our very last twisty bit of the day as we cross over the very last ridge that separates the Wieserbergland and the flatlands of northern Germany. Crack to finish. There we go. That is that. Turn multiplied by two plus one. Twisties are done. Oh dear. I never thought the day would come when I'd use a so solid crew reference in one of my videos. Very sorry. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this little. I don't know what this is. This excursion down to the Wieserbergland just for the sake of being here, I guess, just for the sake of being on the bike for a day. Hiccups at the beginning, there were quite a few preparational errors made as well, but ultimately a very enjoyable day's riding and it stayed dry. It hasn't been the warmest, but it has been the driest, so I will not complain. Thank you all so very, very much for watching. I do sincerely hope to see you in the next video and until then, keep your shiny and I'll see you out there. Bye.